Hi, Stephen Caleb with Brownells here with another edition of Smithbusters. And today we're going to take a look at something called galvanic reaction, which to me is a lot like Bigfoot because I've heard a lot about it, but I haven't seen it. So in the firearm world, and more specifically the AR-15 world, it is a lot like Bigfoot. So the myth here is that when you're building an AR-15 or changing the barrel on an AR-15, galvanic corrosion is something that you need to be aware of and is something that could very possibly happen to your AR-15 setup. Um, so the issue with it here is, and we've read a lot, a lot of this on the forums, this is where most of it this came from. This is where almost all of it comes from. Yeah, and a lot of it's kind of hearsay from back in the Vietnam days, right. but if you try to chase these trails down and figure out you know, the sources of it, where it came from, why people are believing it, there's really no good answer. Um, so we did a little bit of research, we reached out to a few different manufacturers, uh, very well-known good manufacturers, as well as our own research to kind of try and debunk this myth, and I think we did. Um, and here's why. So galvanic corrosion in itself, it's a real thing, but it's not something you need to worry about here. What it is, is a type of corrosion that, um, that happens between two dissimilar metals. Right. And it requires those two metals to be conductive in order for it to happen. They need to be in intimate contact with each other with no barriers between them. Exactly. Um, which, so you have a steel or aluminum AR-15 barrel nut, um, a steel barrel, and then you have your aluminum threads. So the thing here is that anodized aluminum and your AR-15 upper receivers are going to be type 3 hard coat anodized. Uh, anodizing itself is not conductive. So for example when I was doing electrochemical etching on AR receivers etching logos and things like that into them uh, we had to remove the anodizing because anodizing isn't conductive it's more like a stone so that electrolysis couldn't take place. It's a barrier. Exactly between that and the aluminum. Um, so what the big thing here is that a, a lot of people also say is that if you don't lubricate the threads, you'll get galvanic corrosion. And I don't know why that one came about, but the whole point of lubricating the threads is so that you can achieve proper torque. You can't achieve proper torque on dry threads um, because of the way those, the threads on the barrel nut and the threads on the receiver or any thread, not just this, but any type of threads, the way they react the proper torque is always going to come from having lubricated threads. Right. Just something on there to help things slide. Exactly. Uh, so that you get a good even surface yeah. between the two uh, angles of the threads. So it's possible that someone just put two and two together and got five. You know, you oil the threads to prevent galvanic reaction. Yep, very possible. And then, of course, someone said it on the internet and it spread like wildfire because no one at the time, I guess, could disprove it or try to disprove it. But you've got You've got a receiver that's hard anodized. Yep. You've got a barrel that's either blued, parkerized, or stainless. Yep. You've got a barrel nut that's got some kind of treatment on it. It might be nitrated, it might be parkerized. So they've all got all these barriers between the two metals. The, the actual metals really never come in contact to, to establish a bond. Yeah, and like we said before, even the uh, below the surface of the anodizing, there's even though you can see raw aluminum, there's still anodizing there. Uh, and that's, that, that's enough to inhibit any kind of reaction. Exactly. So if you're facing the front of your receiver or anything like that, even though you can see that raw aluminum, it's still there's still some anodizing there to protect it unless you go ridiculously deep, which you shouldn't have to uh, whenever you're facing you're the front of your receiver anyway. So when it comes to galvanic reaction, for this segment we've done more research than we've ever done for any other segment we've filmed, I think. We've asked everybody we know, everybody they knew, try to figure out if anybody's seen galvanic reaction on an AR-15 or an M-16 firsthand. And with all those Vietnam vets out there that worked on guns during the, back in the day in the worst conditions possible, you worked on guns that had been in floodwaters down in New Orleans. Yeah, so back in 2016 when all that flooding happened in South Louisiana, I was there, that's where I was gunsmithing. And not just the initial floodwaters themselves, uh, those are, it's still some pretty gross water, but the back floodwaters. Right. Once all that water gathers up and, and backs up with all that corrosive stuff in it. And these waters, when they touched a blued gun, they were peeling the bluing off like that. Um, it was some really corrosive, gross stuff. And even on those, we completely stripped those AR-15s, um, completely cleaned them, lubricated them, put them back together. No sign of any kind of galvanic corrosion whatsoever on those. And if it's not going to happen there, it's not going to happen. Right. But we also reached out and contacted, well, you've got the list, don't you? 
So you have Sons of Liberty Gunworks. They build excellent quality AR-15s. They mm -hmm. haven't seen it. Um, they use aeroshell grease on their barrel nuts, which is a uh, it, it's a Molly B based grease, which okay. is great for barrel nuts. Um, that's actually what I personally use. Uh, the Brownells Action Lube Plus is a, is Molly B grease. That's basically what it is. Uh, we also reached out to Geisley, and Bill Geisley himself actually made a video reply, which we're releasing with this video. So it's right next to it. Go watch it. Excellent information in that video. Very uh, well done. Yeah, absolutely. And Geisley uses an aluminum barrel nut, and Bill Geisley goes into the type of grease that he uses, uh, so that's also an excellent choice as well. It's not a Molly B, but it's still an excellent choice. Now, there's a lot of uh, people out there that use some weird greases on their barrel nuts. Anti-seizes and, you know, a combination of things. Right, a combination of things is kind of where the, some the trouble comes Some use Loctite as a lubricant. Uh, as the name suggests, it's not a lubricant. <laughs> so, yeah, and with all that being said, there's pretty much nothing on the planet that's gonna cause your AR-15 to do this unless uh, I'm, you would have to be doing some really funky stuff to it. So not on this planet, not on the Bagel Buy system. I don't care where you're, you're running your AR-15. Don't worry about it. Yep, so I'd consider that myth pretty much uh, busted. Busted. Yeah. Now, so, that being said. Yes, that being said, so if you have, or if, well, if you have any information and you would like to try and disprove this, or if you would like to add to it, feel free to leave us a comment down below right. or give us a call on the If you've seen line. it firsthand, send a picture. Send we us a photo know. of it. Oh, yeah. We want to know. If you're just repeating something you heard from your brother-in-law or something, please don't bother. Nope. Not at all. We've heard plenty of that already. Yeah. It's all it's all over the forums. But if you actually have seen Galvanic Reaction on an AR-15, we want to see it. Yes. We want to know about it. Yep. Because absolutely. I'd be, I'd be very interested to see how that happened. Yeah. Me as well. Definitely. So, as always, give us a call on the tech line. We'd be happy to hear from you. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.